London or LDN. Um, and today we're just going to have a little talk about the uh, game against Benfica coming up tomorrow. Um, obviously, it's a one-all aggregate scoreline at the moment. Um, all to play for. Uh, we have got the away goal, so we do hold the advantage. But um, we're just here to basically um, preview it and give you our predictions. So, um, how do you think that? How do you think the game's going to go? Basically, are you are you um, confident? To be honest, not really, because I feel like we don't have as many match winners as they do. Obviously, yeah. being partly Portuguese, I do keep a track on the Portuguese league, and they have players like Pizzi, which is a really yeah. good player. He's a Great midfielder. Player, yeah. yeah, yeah, he's a midfielder yeah. that can score from you know can score from anywhere. It's kind of like he got the shooting range of, I would say, like a Lampard. Obviously not as good, yeah. but, you know, in yeah. the start. You've got Rafa. You've got their yeah. striker, Stefanovic. You've got, mm-hmm. uh, who else? They've got Nuno, uh, Nunes, which is upcoming yeah. Uruguayan striker. So, you know, we, we can't underestimate Benfica because Benfica have got some experienced players. And then they've got Tarat, which we all know that was in the Premier League before. So, yeah. you know, and we're quite... Really reliant on Abamyang and Saka, and outside of them two, nobody's really pulling their weight in terms of goals. For sure, for sure. Um, that is an interesting one, actually. Do you think uh, Abamyang is going to start in this game? Um, considering what happened last game, obviously missed some huge chances um, in that last Benfica game. Do you think he will stick with him, or do you think he'll go for like a, a Martinelli who hasn't really got much of a chance recently, or a Lacazette who was in great goal scoring form before he got dropped? I mean, we're not really in a position that, you know, we can drop Aubameyang. Like, he's the yeah. only person, if he, you know, uh, pulls out of the bag like he did against Leeds, then yeah. he can do magic. But besides him, who else can really score goals? You know, Lacazette misses yeah. chances. He's good with the link-up yeah. play, but he's not yeah. as clinical as we need him to be. Balogun, yeah. I don't know where he's gone. You know, I really <laughs> don't. Absolutely, no. He's... Uh... It will be a real shame if we lose him. He looks a real, real talent. Um, I you think can see that. I be, can see that. Yeah, we should be prioritising keeping him over Nketiah, in my opinion. I don't think Nketiah is going to be quite up to it. Um, he looks like Nketiah, if you give him the right chance in the box, then he can finish it. But anybody can finish those. He doesn't offer anything else outside. He can't pass. His hold-up play is terrible. He hasn't got any strength. He's he's a finisher, but he doesn't finish all his chances. So what does he actually bring to a team? I mean, do you do you rate do you rate Nketiah? Because I surely don't. No, I, I I don't rate Nketiah. Um, from what I've seen of Balogun um, in the under like twenty threes, and when he's come on for Arsenal, he looks so much better than Nketiah. I we should be prioritising him over Nketiah for sure, for sure. Yeah, because Balogun's only come on as a substitute. He's never started. Yeah. You know, and Kenny yeah. has got a lot of starts this season. And what has he yeah. produced? And at the end of the day, if we're going to go back to the old Arsenal, we have to be ruthless and say, look, listen, yeah. if you're not good enough, either go out on loan and get more experience or we're going to have yeah. to sell you. And we could have sold yeah. him, but we chose not to. So I think we have to go with Aubameyang to answer your question. Yeah, um, I agree with you, um, actually. I think we, we we do have to do that. I would actually potentially play uh, Bamiang on the left and I'd actually put Lacazette up front because at the end of the day, if we get the job done, we get the job done in the first half and then we can take a Bamiang off if need be, bring a Pepe on, bring someone like that on, a Smith Rowe on the left, bring Odegaard in the cam. Um, we've got lots of options there. Um, but yeah, a Bamiang would be, if, if he's on... Obviously, we know what he can do. We just need him to be on form. Um, so, yeah. And they um, play a high line. So, the exactly. thing with Benfica, they play a high line. And if, you Very know, Otamendi and Vertonghen, then neither of them have got pace. So, if Aubameyang no. can get in between them, he can blitz them. And he's gone and he's yeah. clear. So. For sure. That's why it would be great if we played. I think we have, if we have Saka on the right, Aubameyang on the left, and you put like Smith Rowe in the cam or Odegaard, I personally prefer Smith Rowe. I think Odegaard looks a very good player. Um, yeah. But Smith Rowe at the moment, I think he's a little bit, he's just got that extra quality at the moment, a little bit more confident than Odegaard. Um, and I think we need to be, we do need Smith Rowe in there. I know he gave away the penalty, which was, you know, it was a penalty because he had his ha- arm in an unnatural position. But we do need him for this game. Um, but pace, I think that's what we need. I think that's the answer to it is pace. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. Because apart from Grimaldo that they've got, 
um, yeah. the left back, they have got no pace in that defence. Oh, you know? And you even saw when we played them in the first leg, they just sitting back. So as soon yeah. as, you know, the only thing we was missing from that match was somebody to unlock, you know, their defence. Yeah. Sure. But if we catch them, you know, they get a bit too brave and come up. You know, if we got Martinelli, I've been screaming out for Martinelli, Saka, uh, personally. Martinelli, Saka and, and Aubameyang. And I'm telling you, we'll yeah. beat them either. I mean, I don't know where Martinelli's gone. Um, I don't know what's happened to Martinelli. He obviously got a few injuries and stuff like that. But he hasn't been given a chance since he's come back. And we know what he can do. He's a great, great young player. Um, but... I don't know why he's playing the likes of Willian and bringing him off the bench and you're leaving Martinelli there. Like, what, what's this? You know? Has Willian got something in his contract? Because I don't get why he, he always comes on. He must do. He must do, honestly. He, I reckon he's got a certain amount of minutes he has to play in the season for us. He must do, because how else can you explain it? I don't really get it. You know, he, he uh, Arteta said that he's going to play them like on the basis of what they do in training and what they do in the match. And Williams done yeah. nothing. Since the Fulham match, the absolutely first nothing. game, he's done absolutely yeah. nothing. Yet he doesn't no. get enough game time. Saliba gets flogged off. Martinelli's not oh, coming. Right. You know, yeah. why is some players made accountable and other players are not? You know? For sure. For sure. Um, and we've got we've got other players um, out on loan as well. Like I saw Lucas Torreira coming on for Atletico Madrid yesterday as well. Um, we've got lots of players out on loan. We have a lot of quality. Saliba, you mentioned there and stuff like that. But we're keeping players like Willian. We've still got players like Callum Chambers on the books. We've still we've got all these. We've got still a lot of Deadwood players. Yeah, we've shifted a lot, but we have still got a lot there. And um, why why they're still getting opportunities, I don't know. They've got to go, a lot of these players. But we, I think Willian's going to be an Ozil situation because who in the right mind is going to take Willian on his contract? Exactly, exactly. And the thing is, it's just there's too many inconsistencies with this manager. Like, you discipline, uh, uh, what's his name, Gunduzi. You discipline yeah. him and he has to go. But Xhaka, when yeah. does he ever apologise to the fans? I've never forgotten that. No, he didn't. He, all he said after his red card was, oh, look, I scored a banging free kick. I've made up for it. Literally. And and he's played OK, but I thought against Benfica, he didn't have his greatest game. I thought against um, Man City, who we've just played, he wasn't all that. Um, the last two, three games, he started to go back to the old jacket where he gives away petulant fouls again. I mean, one, two game displays, you know, where some players turn up doesn't fool me, you know. Some no. of these players have been here now. This is the third manager, yeah. Some yeah. of them are just not good enough. And no. even though we don't have the funds like bigger teams like Real Madrid, Barcelona and these players, we can still ha demand the same level of players yeah. in the sense of yeah. if you don't cut it, there's no, you know, oh, we have to hang on to you. You know, today I'm seeing things like Hecky B, you know, for Hector. He's not good oh. enough. He's not good Hector enough. Bellerin, no, he's surplus to requirements. And I would love to see tomorrow um, Cedric on the right side and Tierney on the left. I don't want Bellerin in there. Bellerin offers nothing. He gets a nosebleed every time he goes forward. At least Cedric can whip across him. My boy Cedric, you know, my fellow Portuguese. Yeah. He's, <laughs> he's, he's a decent player. He's a decent fullback. Um He's got so much more quality than Hector Bellerin does, um, for sure. Bellerin, he, I... He looks like a he just looks like a ballerina. He just looks so soft, pushed off the ball, uh, can't string a pass together, can't whip a crossing. I don't know what he offers. I don't know. I think um, you know, Arteta he came out in a press conference. I don't know if you've seen his last press conference saying that they're mates. I don't want mates at this club. No, I want no. players to be accountable. Do you know, if you're not yeah. good enough, I don't play for Arsenal. Do you know why? Because I'm not good enough. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not good enough. Exactly, That's yeah. it. I'd like no. to believe I am, but I'm not. Yeah, and no. back in Highbury days, that's how it was. If you wasn't good enough, that's it. You yeah, know, but you were now, gone. Yeah, you were gone. But now we 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 got you know some people. Not all Arsenal fans. I hate when Arsenal fans are generalised. Not all Arsenal fans, but there are yeah. a lot of Arsenal fans that think they get attached to some players, and it's like it's okay to say he's not good enough. It's okay because yeah. at the end of the day, yeah. it's the betterment of our team. We want the best yeah. players at this club that we could get. You know, for sure, for sure. Um... Yeah, we just, I feel like there are too many passengers at the club, too many people that can feel they can get away with it, um, not put shifts in and remain at the club, like Willian, for instance. You know, 
He, I've heard that the only reason why he stayed at London is because he's got his restaurant in London. Yeah, he's got yeah. a Brazilian <laughs> restaurant in London. So like what that, that means he can play for Arsenal. What does does that mean? Gordon Ramsay can play for Arsenal as he's got a bloody <laughs> restaurant in London. You know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't really get it. You know, this is the, this is the thing that frustrates me with this club. You know, this manager's come in. He's got David Luiz, which is yep. dead wood, in my opinion. He's not good enough. You know, he's not good yep. enough. He got Willian. He begged Xhaka to stay. You know, yep. he flocked off Terreira. He's breaking. I don't know what he's doing with Guendouzi. You know, I, I don't see, understand. Personally, personally, I rate I rate Terreira. I think he's I think he can be a good player. Um I rated him when he came in. We saw what he did for uh, Sampdoria and what he did in the World Cup uh, against Ronaldo and stuff like that um, for Uruguay. He's he's a very, very solid midfielder, but we're getting rid of these kind of players. We got rid of Aaron Ramsey. We've never replaced him, really. Danny Ceballos has came in. He's not a bad player, but he's not what we're looking for. It's clear to yeah. see that because yeah. the manager doesn't put trust in him. Um, and... I don't. We just don't have the quality at the moment, and we're keeping the wrong players. Do you know what, mate? I'm telling you now. The next transfer, I'm going to be watching everything they're doing because oh, I yeah. keep seeing the excuses of, "Oh, we got rid of Deadwood." No, we got rid of the players. This last transfer window, we got rid of players that wanted to leave. Kalasnach wanted to go. Mustafa, we offered him a contract. He didn't want to stay, so he went. Mm. We did the easy. It's easy to get rid of a player that doesn't want to be here anymore. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. What about Shaka? Yeah. What about moving on Rob Holden? Why do we give Rob Holden an extension? Why? He's Rob never Holding, been... He's, in my opinion, he's been... Rob Holding's been bailed out a lot. One by Leno. I think Leno's a fantastic goalkeeper. Um, I think Kieran Tierney's a fantastic left-back. I think Gabriel can be a fantastic centre-back. And Saliba will be, obviously. He's been absolutely tearing up at Nice. Um, we've also got... Um, Oh, who else? Have we got? Oh, we got. We've also got. Oh yeah, that's who we've got. We got Mavropanos on loan as well. How many <laughs> centre backs have we got? We got Callum Chambers, Rob Holding, David Louise, Mavropanos. We got Zek Medley out on loan. We got. It's. We got Saliba. We got centre backs coming Saliba. out of our ears. <laughs> Never yeah. given a chance. You're telling me no. he's worse than Rob Holding. Why did we buy him? No. Yeah. Why did exactly. we buy him? Exactly. No, I, I, I don't get it, and it, and it shows that. I mean, Rob Holding couldn't even out jump Raheem Sterling for Christ's sake. <laughs> That's a joke. I can't. I just. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know. You know, I, honestly, with Arsenal, man, I, you know, it's just the love of the club. You you carry on, but you're just baffled at some of the decisions. And the thing is, it's not yeah. even that. If the club doesn't move in the direction I'd like it to move, cool. But let me show me by your actions, by your recruitment, by the players that you play, your starting eleven, and your game style. What mm. is it that we're gonna do? You know, people yep. say that yep. we're in a self-sustaining. How's it self-sustaining if we lose that? We never recoup the money we pay for players. How's that self-sustaining? Yep. No, we, we don't. I mean, Liverpool, when you look at them, Liverpool, um, they always, when they sell, like Coutinho, big money, they've reinvested it in the right areas. They bought in Virgil van Dijk and people like that. Right areas, right quality of player. If we're selling the likes of Aaron Ramsey, Alexis Sanchez, Meza Ozil, Santi Cazorla, we got rid of. All these different players, we've got absolutely nothing for them. Jack Wilshere, you know, how the hell are we going to sustain that if we're, if we're just selling assets? Well, we're not even selling them, we're just cancelling their contracts. No, and then you look at Greenwood. You know, Greenwood the other the other week he um, they extended his contract. His his contract isn't even running down, but they're already proactive yeah. because they exactly. know that's an asset. But with exactly. us, what's going on with Elegan? What is going and, on? I know, and and the thing is, they said that we're never ever going to let another player get to a year down on his contract. Now you look at Lacazette next year, contracts up, contracts up. So now we've got Lacazette going to be on a year contract. And he's a very valuable asset. We can't just let him walk out the door for free, surely. We've got to sort him out. We've got to sort so many different players out. And we we give long contracts like Willian, a three-year deal. And we've got con we've got players like Balogun who have got a year left. So it just doesn't make any sense. We've got valuable assets which are going to be walking out on freeze. And we've got players which are worth nothing, which are just draining their contracts tracks and costing the club an absolute fortune yeah 
yeah, exactly. And I see other clubs that are so-called selling clubs, yeah, do better business than us. Look at this. Look at look at look at look at Benfica. Yeah, they got Joao yeah. Felix. Yeah, for zero. And they sold him to Atletico Madrid for 126 million pounds. Yeah. They also had Ruben Diaz come from their academy as well. Both of these guys come from their academy, sold for 86 million euros. Yeah. Then they bought um, the Man City goalkeeper for 500,000 K and then they sold him for 40 mil. Yeah. yeah. Then they had uh, Semedo, which they also got from the academy and sold to Barcelona for 35 million euros. You know what I mean? Renato mm -hmm. Sanchez, another one for the academy, 35 mil. Yeah. You know, um, um, Linda, it goes on. I'm not even going to go through it all. That no, is how no. you run. That's our sustaining business. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And we, we, we do the opposite. We bring massive players in like Lacazette for 50 million pounds. And we're going to be selling them for about 20 million, if that. What direction would you like Arsenal to go in? You know? I mean, I don't mind the whole self-sustaining model. Don't get me wrong. The self-sustaining model works, but you have to do it properly. You have to do it in the right way because you can't say we're going to be a self-sustaining club because you can see self-sustaining works because you look at the likes of um, Liverpool, for instance. It works, but you have to run it um, in that way. You can't be You can't be buying huge players, selling them on for nothing. You've also got to make real use of your academy. You like players like Martinelli, for instance, right? Huge potential. If you don't build them players up, they're going to walk out on a free because they'll get annoyed or they'll go for the cheapest, cheapest value that they could possibly go for. Whereas um, we are using the likes of Willian and stuff like that, who, let's face it, you're not going to get anything for anyway. And we're letting Martinelli sit on the bench. You can't be self sustaining if you do that. Exactly, exactly. And look at Dortmund. You telling me that Dortmund make more more money than Arsenal? We have way more money than Dortmund. But you, they yeah, invest in the sure. key areas, which is scouting. Mm -hmm. You look at their team yeah. and you can see what they're doing. You know, yeah. I don't understand it. Like we can go out there yeah. and spend twenty two to twenty five million on upcoming yeah. nineteen to twenty two year old to twenty three mm -hmm. year old players, and if they don't work out, well, now it's a Premier League player, so you'll easily recoup your money. Liverpool. Got twenty? Was it twenty-five million for Brewster? What's he ever yeah. done? I know exactly. It is. It's crazy. It's like Dominic Solanke, twenty million pounds. What's he done? <laughs> this is what I'm saying. It's not hard. Right. I do it on Football Manager. I do it on yeah. FIFA. Right. I don't know why we can't do it in real life. I don't get for, it. For, for oh. like when you when you look at Liverpool as well, their their incomings. Trent Alexander Arnold. You he he was from the academy. You look at Andy Robertson. But Vert, he was at Hull and when they got relegated, I think he cost about six million quid. You know, you've got players like that who have come in. I don't think Matip costs that much, for instance. Yeah. Like, you've got all these different players um, and like James Milner that they've bought in very, very cheap amounts, turned into very, very good players. And they've sold their very valuable assets, bought in world-class players, the odd one like Van Dyke, Mo Salah, People like that, and um, and like Fabinho and Allison in goal, but they've invested in the right areas, the right players, and they've also bought people up, and that's what you've got to do. Exactly, exactly, and I don't see it, you know, and it all comes from the owner because at the end of the day, if I'm the owner of Arsenal, I'm going to make everybody accountable, you know. Yes, I'll keep people, yeah. you know, in position that I've put, you know, a sporting director, the manager. But I will be reviewing what you're doing. And if you're not doing yeah. your job, then I'm going to get somebody else in. But it just seems yeah. like, you know, Edu just giving jobs to the boys. And I don't yeah. get it. These long contracts on players that we're not, we, we can't sell them on because they're already at the end of their career. And they're on really high wages. And really we made the mistake wages. already. Exactly. I mean, a lot of the problem that we've had in selling our uh, dead wood is because they're on high wages. These guys are already sure. hitting 90 to yeah. 100k and they're not worth that so why no. are we giving players like william and and and, and uh, david louise you know i don't even yeah. want to go with david louise because this that's something like he's giving away uh, something like six penalties or something you've got like six red cards three, red cards. <laughs> three red cards yeah <laughs> it's um it so this is the question so are you arteta in or are you arteta out i've always been arteta out. i never wanted him um 
you know, I, I'll be honest with you, I, I wanted uh, Wenger out three years before he was out. I, I wanted I Wenger out, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I loved him and I wanted him to leave with that love intact, you know, as he's gone, obviously now, you know, you leave it in the past. But he should have been moved on a lot faster. And then when we got uh, Unai Emery, he was never the guy I wanted, you know. No. But I said, OK, cool. He wasn't cutting it. But if I knew that when we sacked Emery, that we would get Arteta, I would have carried on with Emery. I wouldn't have got Arteta, you know. And I just felt like the media made him, you know. It's it just, I don't know how they tell us to be behind Arteta in 10th. But when it was Emery, they were quick to throw him under the bus at sixth place. And that still wasn't good enough. Yeah. I mean, you look at um, Unai Emery now, what he's doing with um, Villarreal. Is it Villarreal he's with? Yeah, I believe it is. And some of the stuff he's done over there, and it has been very, very good. Um, also, with PSG, he didn't do too bad either. And now, obviously, uh, like Chelsea, you've got Thomas Tuchel in and stuff like that from PSG. Um, I think Emery, what Emery had o- had over Arteta, what Arteta's got now is experience and he knows how to deal with players um, at a certain level, like um, the likes of Aubameyang, Meza Ozil. He had to deal with Neymar and Mbappe and all these kind of players. He's got experience with dealing with those big names, whereas Arteta does not have experience with dealing with big names and stuff like that. He doesn't have any experience at all. Um, you know, it was what's, what's Pep Guardiola. Because I don't. Know. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> it's, it's it's chopping and changing all the time. When someone hits a, when someone hits form, it seems like they get dropped. Lacazette hit a bit of form, he gets dropped. Um, he goes five at the back sometimes. Now four at the back. Um, he doesn't know. He, what was baffling against me uh, to me against City was the way he played Pepe on the right and Saka on the left. I thought. I thought it was the other way around now. I didn't think that was. They played awful, both of them. I don't get it. I really don't get it. Like you just said, some players hit form like Pepe and then they're dropped. And then yeah, others Pepe are Pepe hit form and he was dropped. I mean, what what, what was that about? I, I, don't, I, don't, I really don't get it. I really <laughs> don't get it. I really, really don't get it. And the thing is, yeah, it's not even that I don't have patience. We've been waiting. We moved from Highbury and we were promised when we went to the Emirates that we would be competing with Bayern Munich. Now, did you see what they've yeah. done? Did you see they won yeah. the Champions League and they won exactly. the other one against Lazio? We're nowhere near that level. No, we're not. And we got peppered when we went to Bayern Munich. <laughs> if you remember, the, the, t- the 10-2, I mean. the famous 10-2. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> just... You can only laugh. You can only laugh because it is so bad. It's... um. You know, you had um, it was like when West Ham moved to the London Stadium. I mean, look what West Ham are doing now, though. I mean, fourth in the league. What's going on there? They think they are bad. We're 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 basically West Ham now. Exactly. And if you look, look, I don't know if you ever grown a, a dreadlock. I'm growing them now. Yeah, I'm on month I'm six. Not, it I'm takes not, patience. Yeah. So mm. no one can tell me I don't have patience. Trust me, it takes patience. My hair is frizzy. Yeah. It goes through all sorts. I have patience, but I need to see a plan. I need to see a direction. I need to see, okay, cool. You know, when they said, like you said earlier on, when they said contracts aren't running down, when we're seeing people's contracts running down like Balogun, look, Balogun, this is the contract. We'll give you what you want. Sign, sign on the dotted line or you're out. Yeah. They said anyone in the last two years of their contract, if you don't sign, we're selling you. Why well, not seeing yeah. that? No, it's 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 not well it's clearly not happening because you've got like Balogun and Lacazette, which are in the same position that Alexis Sanchez and Meza Ozil are in. Do you remember back then? And Aaron Ramsey and all the all the other ones. So, the club need yeah. to give us something to be positive about. We we can't as fans just be blindly positive. I want to be positive. You know, I've been yeah. rinsed for the last 17 years by my uncles, by everyone. Like, ah, oh, your eyes are always on top of me. I really got it. And the thing is, it's yeah. like, with Wenger, there was always something, you know, and the restraints he was under. And, you know, I really loved Wenger. And he'd always make us competitive. We're not even competitive anymore, bro. No. We're not competitive anymore. No, we're not. Well, we're fighting for mid-table. And we're fighting just to get into the kind of top half at the moment. And that's just not where we just can't be there and we're not going to get European football through the league for me the league is done completely done um the only way through is through Benfica and then on to obviously whoever we face next in the Europa League and 
we're not going to win the Europa League. I don't. I'm not stupid enough to think we're going to win the Europa League after this season. Um, <laughs> there's so many better teams. I mean, you look at Tottenham. I think they're beating Wolfsburg of five one on aggregate now. I don't know if they've scored again, but you know, even even you know, Tottenham are terrible at the moment, but we're even worse. So, yeah, we can't laugh at Tottenham. We just got to focus no, on us. We got to yeah. focus on ourselves because when we focus, if we give that energy that we direct at them to ourselves and focusing on what we're doing and holding this club accountable for the promises they made us as fans, then we will move forward. I can't banner no one. Do you know how long I couldn't even go to the pub to watch Arsenal? Because I just <laughs> knew what it was going to be. I didn't even bother. You know what I mean? And I, I don't want to feel like that. I want to feel, I want to have my chest up, you know? Like, yeah, I'm going to yeah. go see my team. We're playing yeah. today. It doesn't yeah. matter who it is, you know? And the thing is, I mean, for me personally, I would like... Um, us to go on the all-out attack against Benfica. I want mm. um, you no. Know, they're saying that Partey might be back. I don't know. Do you, could, could you confirm that? Yeah. Uh, no, I have. I have heard that he uh, there is a possibility that he'll be back. But whether they'll risk him against Benfica, I don't know. Or they'll save him for that. I think it's Leicester we've got in the league next. Um, I don't know what. I don't know what they'll do there. Um, I think if Partey doesn't play, then I think it might be Sabios that comes in. I reckon. I reckon that's who we'll go for. Um, he's a bit creative, so. I don't trust Xhaka being a, a CDM. That's the problem. No, I don't trust. Him. I actually, I actually thought El Nenny did all right against Man City. I didn't think he was too bad, to be honest. I think El Nenny, when he's been called upon, um, he hasn't been that bad for us. Like he's quite consistent. I mean, he's consistently sideways and backwards, but. He's consistent in what he does. <laughs> yeah, it is what he says on a tin with him, isn't it? It is. It's not it is. He's, he, he doesn't do anything flashy. He doesn't do anything stupid like Xhaka. But yeah, he just yeah. is very consistent in what he does. And yeah. he he can score a worldie. I mean, fair play to him. He can score a worldie. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean that that's our only, you know, our only hope. And like you said, if we don't play Bellerin, because he is a liability and, and against the Benfica match, I saw him bombing yeah. forward. Luckily for him, we wasn't, you know, we wasn't um we wasn't we didn't pay for it, you know, but he's making he's making he always makes these mistakes, you know, and, yeah. and it's gonna cost us, you know. Um yeah. Trent has been doing it with Liverpool and they've suffered yeah. this season. It seems like Van Dyke hasn't been there and he's bombed forward the same way, you know, he's got some Bellerin in his game. Yeah. And uh, he's been <laughs> You know what I mean? And I don't have nothing no, I'd against rather have, I'd rather I... have Trent than Bellerin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anything, anything, anything. Any day. You know, but I, I just, you know, I, I I still believe that we can beat Benfica because Benfica, mm. they drew their last game um, yeah. for those that may not keep up with the Portuguese league and they've been really, really inconsistent. But I'll tell you something, I did a preview with a Benfica fan um, for the first game that we had and even he said to I said to him, in Portugal, I already kind of knew the answer, but I said to him, in Portugal, if you was 10th, what would happen to that manager? You know, you're expected, you're the, you're the biggest club in Portugal. Yeah. You, If you were in 10th, yeah. what would happen? And he said, it wouldn't even reach 10th. You'd be out. As soon as you're below yeah. top four, you're out. And that's mm. Benfica, you know? And some Arsenal yeah. fans, you know, and Arsenal, we're I, bigger than Benfica. I think the reason why Arteta has been given as long as he is, one, is because he's a uh, previous player. And two is because there's no fans in the stadium. I think if there was fans in the stadium, there'd be all sorts of riots going on in there. And I think they, I think they'd know about it. You know, everybody where there was that pressure on Unai Emery because I went to Unai Emery's last game in the Europa League against Frankfurt when we lost two one, and he got sacked the next day. And the amount of pressure there was on Unai Emery was stupid amounts. You know, but. Um, Arteta, there's none of that because there's no fans in the stadium, so there's no one on getting on his back or anything like that. You just hear stuff on online, and that's it. Exactly, exactly. But you know what? It looks like fans are returning, and the heat is yeah. going to be turned up. <laughs> and hopefully, you know, people like yourself that you see the light, you see what's going on. You're not deceived by this club that yeah. they need yeah. to, you know, um, hold up to the promises and and the standard. Man, we're Arsenal. Yeah. I grew up Arsenal exactly. winning leagues. I, I grew yeah. up. I'm from 92. I grew up I've seen Arsenal winning league, winning doubles. Yeah. That's how I saw Arsenal, man. And to see yeah. people think that it's okay to be 10th. Listen, we're, we're bigger than that. We're bigger than that. Top four wasn't good enough for me because my standard always stays here, bro. Like, I don't yeah. drop it for no one within me no, and my life. Sure. 
You know, yeah. I drop it. Like, I, and I'm not going to drop it because this club, the only ones that keep the club alive are the fans. And if the fans demand success, then the club will demand success. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, um, I'm going to wrap it up. Um, finally, just give us your school prediction uh, for tomorrow. Your your one in the game, and then obviously we know on aggregate. What do you reckon? <laughs> uh, in the game, I'll say two nil. The three, three two nil. Three, well, yeah. that is actually exactly what I've written down as well. <laughs> two nil, two nil Arsenal. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm confident. I think we will get through. Um, I mean, it's going to be difficult, but if we play it right, we'll we'll do it. We'll do it. So oh, yeah, nice. thanks for coming on, and um, it's I'll put your. Uh, link in the description and everything like that. But go and subscribe to uh, Northside London. And um, yeah, thanks for coming on. Yeah, thank you very much, bro. Thank you very much. Hopefully we win. Yeah, definitely. All right. Cheers. Bye. Cheers. Bye.